today we are going to study the human alimentary canal you are watching the video when we take the food it enters inside the body and it undergo digestion and the waste undigested food will be removed from our body now this is human alimentary canal buccal cavity and then esophagus and then stomach large intestine small intestine rectum and anus now now the glands in the alimentary canal are salivary glands liver and the pancreas which involve in secreting the secretions now this is human alimentary canal when we take the food we take through the mouth and it is subjected for mastication and we have a jaw socket and in the jaw socket there is teeth which helps in mastication so after the food broken down into small pieces by a continuous chewing along with that you find salivary juice secretion there are three pairs of salivary glands secretes the salivary juice and that is rich in uh, amylase which converts the starch into maltose there are three pairs of salivary glands helps in digestion of starch and this salivary juice only digest starch into maltose now after chewing when mixed with the salivary juice it is converted into bolus it enters into the esophagus you can observe peristaltic movement rhythmic contraction and relaxation with the help of a contraction and relaxation it enters into the stomach as soon the food enters into stomach there will be secretions to and uh, in the stomach the secretions are hcl pepsin and renin so the yellowish fluid that is hcl acid which kills the pathogens which enters along with the food the hcl helps protect the uh, protect us from the pathogens and renin and pepsin helps in digestion of the proteins as we know renin present in infants and the rest of the people have pepsin in order to digest the protein so soon after uh, partial digestion in the stomach it enters into small intestine so before entering into small intestine so the pancreas secretes pancreatic juice and this pancreas is a gland which secretes pancreatic juice meanwhile there is other gland liver which secretes the bile juice and this helps in emulsification of fat that is it activates the lipase in order to digest the lipids in pancreatic juice the amylase enzyme digests the starch trips in digests the proteins and digestion of lipids with the help of lipase and the nucleases are also the enzymes present in pancreas they converts nucleic acids into nucleotides and nucleosides so this is about the digestion of pancreatic juice and we know pancreas helps in digestion and next enters into small intestine where complete digestion takes place they have specialized finger like structures called villi rich in blood vessels in the small intestine there are certain enzymes dipeptidase malto maltase lactase and sucrase so these are the different um, enzymes which helps in digestion of uh, proteins carbohydrates and lipids and after digestion it uh, 
uh, allows the nutrients to flow into blood stream and through the blood stream it is supplied to each and every cell and helps for respiration unwanted digested waste material are collected in large intestine and certain water content is observed in the large intestine and rest of the waste material and digested food is removed through the rectum and finally through the anus so this is human elementary canal diagram you want to practice it for the exam we are going to study the other concept under life process that is heterotrophic nutrition previous class we studied about autotrophic nutrition and that too photosynthesis which takes place in all green plants now we deal with heterotrophic nutrition in this class now heterotrophic nutrition commonly found in all kinds of animals so heterotrophic nutrition they cannot prepare their own food they depend on other organisms for the food now what are the different uh, categories we find under heterotrophic nutrition the first thing is now we'll take one example all kinds of animals all animals they cannot prepare their own food they depend on other organisms for the food hence they comes under heterotrophic mode of nutrition and there is another category called saprophytes saprophytes are the organisms they prepare the food by breaking the food which is present in dead and decay matter that means they cannot directly prepare the food they depends on dead and decay matter saprophytes example bread molds mushroom yeast so they breaks down the food outside the body that is in dead and decay matter and that is saprophytic mode of nutrition the organisms which depend on dead and decay matter are called saprophytes example i said bread mold yeast mushroom and all sorts of fungus and there is other type that is parasitic what is this parasitic mode of nutrition parasitic means even these organisms cannot prepare their own food but they depend on other organisms what kind of organisms they depend on other living organisms hence they are called parasites if you want example cascuta under plant take from leeches comes under animals so like this animals depend on other organisms for the nutrition saprophytes they break down the food outside the body they depend on dead and decay matter example yeast fungus etc parasitic organisms they depend on other living organisms they may cause disease they may not cause disease they may be depending only for the nutrition sometimes it may cause diseases also on living organisms such organisms are called parasitic now in this chapter we are going to study how the heterotrophic mode of nutrition takes place in animals that to particularly amoeba and human beings amoeba is a microscopic organism unicellular organism with single nucleus and there are cell organelles in the amoeba amoeba how the nutrition is observed now we know the amoeba when it see the prey or food particles it starts its external outgrowth and forms and pseudopodia 
and it covers completely and this becomes foot vacuole inside the amoeba. Now by the pseudopodia it completely captures the prey and it forms a food vacuole. Soon after the formation of food vacuole, the amylase enzyme present inside the amoeba, it breaks down the food and it utilizes for its life activity and the waste will be discarded just leaving that waste there and the amoeba moves forward. Now waste is removed and the food is entered inside the body in a form of food vacuole. Now how the food vacuole gets broken down by the amylase enzyme. So like this the nutrition is observed in amoeba. And next we are going to study the nutrition, how the nutrition absorption takes place in human beings. This is human alimentary canal where the human alimentary canal have these parts, mouth, esophagus, stomach, liver, small intestine, large intestine and here there will be pancreas and here there will be pancreas and anus. Now we already know we intake the food in different form in carbohydrate form, protein form, lipid form. So it requires different kinds of enzymes in order to digest different components of the food. Anyhow when we take the food, we the food enters into the mouth that is in a buccal cavity by chewing it breaks down into smaller particles and enters inside the buccal cavity. When it enters inside the buccal cavity, there will be three pairs of salivary glands and these three pairs of salivary glands secretes salivary juice and this salivary juice is rich with amylase enzyme. So here amylase enzyme helps in digestion. Some part of the food like starch converts into maltose that will be done in buccal cavity by the help of salivary juice secreted in salivary glands. And next part is the food pulp. Elongated food pipe otherwise called esophagus and here the food converts into bolus. How the bolus moves in esophagus by peristaltic movement. The continuous contraction and relaxation, rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the food pipe is known as peristaltic movement. By the peristaltic movement the food materials, bolus material starts moving and enters inside the stomach. And here in the stomach, we want to remember three important points. Stomach is lined by mucilaginous sheath which has mucilaginous gland secretes mucus. And is there any role of mucus? Definitely yes. It prevents the formation of ulcers inside the stomach. Mucus has a greater role in preventing the ulcers. And how the ulcers will be formed in the stomach? We know the stomach secretes the juice called HCL. HCL juice is secreted in the stomach. It may harm the stomach wall in order to prevent that. The mucus prevents the ulcer. The gastric glands secretes the enzymes called Pepsin and renin. The gastric glands present in the stomach secretes pepsin and renin. What is the role of pepsin and renin? This, this will be asked for one more question. So pepsin which helps in digestion of protein. So P protein it helps in digestion of protein. And renin which converts the milk into insoluble curd. That is converts milk into curd. The renin role is it converts the milk into insoluble curd and the protein digestion takes place by Pepsi. So in the stomach the three very important points. So the mucus secretion prevents the ulcers. HCL 
this is an acid produced in the stomach which kills the microorganisms microscopic organisms which enters along with the food so which enters along with the food those microbes will, will be killed by the hcl and it forms uh, acidic medium and the other two enzymes that is pepsin and renin pepsin helps in digestion of protein renin helps in conversion of milk into curds and now after a partial digestion of food in the stomach it enters into small intestine before entering into small intestine the liver produces bile juice and the bile juice converts the fat molecules the fat globules which are larger in size will convert into smaller size the large globules converted into small globules by the help of bile juice secreted by the liver hence the bile juice role is it involved in emulsification of fat the other one is pancreas so pancreas too have the major role in the digestion of the food trypsin this will be asked on one more question trypsin helps in the digestion of protein trypsin helps in digestion of protein and this will be secreted by the pancreas and the pancreatic juice mixes with the food helps in digestion and next it enters into the small intestine in this small intestine once again the digestion takes place and it completes the digestion now complete digestion takes place in small intestine and this is the largest part of alimentary canal now if we come towards the small intestine we should know what is the importance of this small intestine small intestine has a small finger like structures called villi and this villi helps in absorption of the nutrients and this small intestine usually in animals it is smaller in size whereas in herbivores it is larger in size why in herbivores they consume the food which is rich in cellulose and cellulose digestion is very slow hence they require very long small intestine that is in herbivores but we animals like we doesn't require long small intestine we require enough sufficient small intestine is enough because we have different kinds of enzymes to digest the protein and hence so we have a moderate size of small intestine so after completing the digestion in the small intestine it enters into large intestine and in the large intestine the water will be absorbed and discarded waste will be removed through the anus and there is another role in small intestine even in the small intestine they do have the enzymes like maltase peptidase lipase so lipase helps in digestion of lipids peptidase helps in digestion of proteins maltase now i already said in the mouth amylase enzyme converts starch into maltose right that maltose will be digested by maltase so like this maltase peptidase lipase present in the small intestine helps in digestion complete digestion of the food so villi is a major role plays in small intestine which have a finger like projections helps rich with blood vessels and absorbs the nutrients and supply to to the rest of the body by the blood stream so this about the digestion in the human beings so this human alimentary canal diagram is very important for the exam so all of you practice this and this diagram is must you want to grow through this and try to learn what were the different activities of uh, uh, parts of the alimentary canal 
and also the role of enzymes.